A very useful piece of equipment in the knife maker's armoury is a, a good oven. Um, but the oven needs to be as accurately controlled as possible and uh, if you were to rely on, on the uh, the actual sort of thermocouple which controls the oven here it would be uh, not quite as suitable really. So for my uh, purposes I've got this Omron controller. Uh, the Omron's a very uh, good quality controller with a solid state relay and this basically turns the oven on and off and uh, sets it up to become very accurate and I can control my oven to uh, very accurate tolerances using this system. Uh, an oven like this you can use it for all sorts of applications and I use it for drying wood, uh, for curing my knife scales which is what I'm going to do now. I've, I've got some scales up here which have been um, vacuum stabilised and now they're ready to be uh, hardened in the oven so that requires a very uh, accurate temperature range for between between 93 degrees centigrade and 100 degrees centigrade. Don't really want to go over 100. If you go over 100, you start getting bleed out uh, and you're pushing the uh, the resin out before it has a chance to harden. Go beneath 93 degrees centigrade and the resin won't harden. And it's only a one shot at this. If you, if you don't harden the resin on the first attempt, you've ruined it. So um, I'm going to put my knife scales in now and uh, show you just how stable my oven is. Also this, this oven is also good for tempering. Just a quick uh, talk about this little box here. This is the controlling box here uh, and there's um, I'd say not an Omron controller in my case but here's one uh, a similar sort of device um, and basically you set the, the bottom line is your target uh, temperatures and the top line is the actual temperature measured in the oven and this, this goes to a thermocouple uh, in the side of the oven there and then I've got another thermocouple which comes out uh, so I can measure my oven temperature accurately uh, so you can see here my oven is now at 97.5, 97.6 degrees centigrade, which is ideal for uh, curing my knife scales. So what I'm going to do is uh, load up my oven now, and then come back and probably check every sort of quarter of an hour or so, just to show you just how stable this. Uh, this oven is with this controller, it's quite amazing. Well, the time now is 20 past 10, and we're on uh, 97.9. So, here we are now, 10 to 11. Temperature it is. 96.6 another temperature check we're looking at 10 past 11 and we're at 96 degrees centigrade half past 11 now and we're at 96.4 degrees centigrade now at quarter past 12 and we're on 97.8 now we're at 25 to 2 and we're reading 96.7 degrees centigrade and now it's just gone quarter past 2 and uh, our temperature is 97.3 degrees centigrade so you can see that the uh, the variation is very tiny which is uh, which is excellent so they've had long enough in there uh, cooking now so uh, turn them off
obviously they are going to be very uh, hot to handle, but no, they're fine. There's no bleed out from the ends, which is what you get if you do too high a temperature. Here's a piece of bog oak, um, which was initially quite soft when I, when I uh, bought the piece, but it's really now transformed it to I can't make any impressions in there with my fingernail uh, so that's a, a very successful outcome for that piece of bog oak what would have been an unusable piece of wood without stabilising is now going to make perfect set of knife scales Here's a set of uh, bog oak scales which I've just finished stabilising now. Just uh, roughly got them flat and uh, cut them open and you can see and you can hear how uh, how hard they've become. Well, I've just uh, applied the, the epoxy to um, Ben's bog oak scales and uh, just give you, give you some idea of the colour Ben I think they're going to be really uh, really nice I've just used my oven to dry some wood out uh, they come out nice Nice and dry, they've been overnight in there, well for the last 18 hours actually, so half a day and, and, and then overnight. Um, someone said, do you get any cracks? Uh, well, I don't, certain woods will crack really, really bad. I had, I had some wood, uh, which a chap sent me, it was glycerin wood from New Zealand. And no matter what I did to it, I could not get it to not crack. But uh, most woods, if you do it gently, uh, don't crack. But the key to it is, before you even dry it in the oven, you want to get it as dry as you possibly can. Uh, and some of this wood, this is my, some of my wood store that I store in, a, in the conservatory, and I store some in the metal cabinet over there. Uh, and I mean, that's probably uh, years old already, so uh, it's already quite dry before I even start the, uh, the oven curing process. Well, there's the wood all in the the vacuum chamber. I thought I'd bring you along for this, but I know I showed it before, but it's such a, a visual process, you know, such a, such a lot happens in in a short space of time, so I'm going to get, get the air out of this now. Uh, and the initial sort of uh, burst of air, I think, is quite amazing. So turn the vacuum pump on, seal the, uh, the vacuum chamber. And then if I don't wash it, it'll overflow, it goes absolutely mad, pulling all the air out of the wood. I mean, that is just incredible. I'm just regulating the valve now so it doesn't overflow. With this system, it's uh, quite an easy thing to do. I've got a little valve on the top. I'll show you. So I can just tweak it. I want a bit more vacuum, close the valve, a bit less vacuum, open the valve. And I'll keep doing that until I get to the point where I can shut the valve fully and leave the vacuum chamber alone and let it just remove completely all the air from the wood. <laughs> 